classical nature of Tamil. But his wife, Eliza Caldwell, wrote of the Tamil spoken about here, by meaning where they were living, as being very barbarous. In other words, the, 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 the dialect of that area, the spoken Tamil of that area, barbarous. But these people were not talking about barbarians and uncivilized. They're using barbarous in the sense of alien or not, uh, or, or, or uh, uncultivated, perhaps. Okay, now, Henriques in the Arte de Lingua Malabar. This is uh, familiar to you, I think, this one, yes. Uh, he says that Tamil has five declensions. How am I doing for time? Five declensions, five patterns of noun formation. And he gives them here, one, two, three, four, five. But within number two, he gives two different varieties. And within number five, he gives three different varieties. So why do they got five? Well, they've got five because Latin has five. And so if Latin, what they wanted to do, when they saw that Tamil had declensions and case endings, they saw this as the pattern of a classical language. For them, classics means in Latin and Greek. And if you could fit Tamil into the Latin pattern, this gave you the classical mold. So even though it's perfectly obvious that Tamil does not have five declensions, they wanted to fit it in to follow the Latin mold. So we have uh, masculine names, descriptors, and feminines, and then the second one here. This could easily be two different declensions. Uh, we'll come to that in a moment. He gives a paradigm of five cases in Latin. This is uh, Henriques. Nominative, vocative, accusative, gender, dative. Okay? Now the ablative he doesn't include. But he adds the ablative ends in ille or ill, uh, and he gives this as a locative. That's it. Balthazar Acosta, a little bit later, in his grammar, gives a paradigm and he gives three different forms of ablative. Now, of course, Latin doesn't have this. So either you say Tamil has a different, sec a different set of cases, or you say they're all really ablative. And then it fits into the Latin pattern. So they gave, th what he said was, no, they're not different, they're all ablative. Look at them, they all end in different endings in, in Tamil, as you know. But they said, no, 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 they, it's all ablative, really. Uh, but they're stative, instrumental, and associative ablatives. Because it then fits into the Latin pattern. They wanted it to fit the classical mold. Uh, other distinctions, like with regard to, for example, Kuriche or Kaga, he doesn't put into ablative, uh, because these were not, they, they, weren't, they weren't considered to be inflectional endings, and because they don't fit into the Latin pattern, these senses, with regard to and for the love of and things like that, did not have case endings in Latin. But they have endings in Tamil. So they said, no, 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 they're not really endings, because Latin doesn't have them, therefore they are not. Just a picture of one of the manuscripts there. So you can see the, the, way, they, the way they wrote. You probably recognize this. One of the Goa manuscripts. I, yeah, uh, the way they wrote the singular here, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative. They wrote the paradigms just as they learned Latin in school. And here you have... It's not, <laughs> what they're doing here is not saying this is a different case. It's all ablative. It's all that because Latin has one ablative. And therefore, they've got to put it all into this same function. There's another one. This is uh, 35. And the same thing happens here. Now, Da Costa suggested that Tamil doesn't actually have five declensions. It only has one based on stem alternation. So he said there's one type of noun in Tamil and you can account for all of the phonetic changes. Whereas Henriques had said there were five different, five different patterns of noun. Um, what is happening here, of course, is that there is a realization that there, Tamil doesn't, is not inflecting. It's agglutinative and that's slightly different, but they're only just beginning to realize this. Baldius, a Protestant in Sri Lanka, he had six cases for Tamil with the ablative expanded into four functions. Uh, basically, you say the ablet it's ablative, but with different functions. That's probably more like what the truth is. <laughs> Tegenbalg wrote, Tamil is a peculiar language full of gravity and pathos. Now we're getting into the middle of the 18th century, as we will learn about in a moment. 
The point is that now they're recognizing that Tamil is not barbarous anymore. It's peculiar. Peculiar in the 18th century doesn't mean strange in a negative sense. It's a very positive word. A rather particular, it means special language. That's what it really means. Uh, it's exact and copious. Copious. It has a wide vocabulary. At last they're beginning to realize this. A wide vocabulary. As the German and Latin are. Tamil is a classical language. Like Latin. They're beginning to realize this in the 18th century. Before Caldwell, long before Caldwell. Okay? Gone is the epithet Baba. Tamil pronunciation now touches the ear agreeably. Beautiful, beautiful phrase. And no longer is the language deficient in vocabulary. You can see how the more people learnt about and learnt Tamil, the more they appreciated it, on it for its own merits and didn't come to it as a Baba language. For Siegenbald, Tamil is on a par with German, his mother tongue. And the quintessential classical language, Latin. They realize, he realized, I mean, they didn't actually say this. They didn't say it's classical. But they said Tamil and Latin are on a par. And what they are saying, therefore, is that uh, Tamil is as good as, if you like the word good, a classical language as anything else. In Grammatica Tamulica, I won't talk about this because you're going to talk about that. I'll leave that. <laughs> and then we go to the last one, which is Besky. And Besky made an, a study of how Tamilian grammarians analyze their own language. And he observes that in gr traditional grammars, uh, grammars of Tamil, there were no declensions. So the declensions were superimposed on Tamil by the Europeans to fit the classical mold. Besky follows Da Costa in saying, actually, the nouns, there's only one form of noun, and you can account for all the changes uh, phonologically. And he gives an eight case model where he says ab stative ablative, instrumental ablative, associative ablative are separate cases. Although he calls them ablative, he says they are actually separate. Probably more realistic. In this language, the noun has a proper sense, just one declension. All the cases of nouns are declined in the single way. Because as, you, uh, as we saw in Latin and Greek, there are, diff there are five different patterns, basically in, in Latin, five different patterns of noun. But in Tamil, he says, no, they're all declined in the same way. And then you fit in the phonological changes. And he de de details the senses of the various ablatives, adding the stative in ill is also used to express comparison. Uh, Besky's and Ziegenbalg's analysis are not the same. Uh, Ziegenbalg treats things like Eikonde as unique ending, and Besky analyzes, sub analyzes these uh, I I as functional verbal suffixes, but we're not going to, we, we, we needn't bother about that. All right. He divides the ablative into three, and he gives the locative, all of these locatives, and we've been talking with a colleague here about uh, space. Already they were realizing that there were different forms of locative, different spatial relationships, but they didn't have the words in English to explain these. They are all locative. But you could actually say, well, no, they're not all locative in the same way. Il is not the same as il datile and ulle. But they don't have the words. In other words, it's Latin and French and German and English, which is deficient in vocabulary, to explain spatial relationships in Tamil. For the associative, look at all these, all very different. But we don't have...